So now that you've seen an example of applying the command pattern in the context of our expression tree processing app, let's go ahead and talk about the structure and the functionality of this pattern. Now, this is kind of, if you read the Gang of Four book, this is what you'll be focusing on because they, they describe these in a, in a very stylized way. So the intent of this pattern is to encapsulate the request for a service as an object. And I think that's a pretty nice explanation. So you've got some service, you want to format something or you want to print something, you want to evaluate something, and you're going to make that request be handled as an object and it's going to have a canonical method called execute in order to perform that command. When would you apply this pattern, you might ask? Well, the Gang of Four has an applicability section and they say, apply this pattern if you want to parameterize objects with uh, actions to perform. And so each object, which is of course going to be an instance of a subclass of the base class, the command base class, will be given a different execute method to do its thing. So in our case, the, the things we want them to do is we want to be able to do formatting and setting an expression and printing and evaluating and so on. Some other things you might want to do, which we don't actually actually do in our particular example, but you might want to, and we'll talk about it because it's important to understand, you might want to be able to create or specify, queue, and then execute requests at different times. So we don't necessarily want to do them all right away. We want to be able to enqueue them and then come back to them later. And we'll see that that actually is a segue into another variant of this pattern called the command processor pattern that enqueues them up and runs them in different threads or different processes. That's a little bit more advanced uh, use case that we'll talk about that when we get a little further along. Something else you might want to be able to do, which we don't do here in our code, but, but is also very common, is support multi-level undo and redo. So often it's the case when you have commands, especially those driven by user input, you might want to give the user a chance to undo something that they just did. For example, if you've worked with Microsoft Office, you know if you're typing in Word or you're doing some computation or doing some expressions in Excel or you make some drawings in PowerPoint and whatnot, if you suddenly realize, oh, I didn't want to do that, you can type Control Z and it undoes it. And then if you go, oh, I really did want to do that, you can type Control Y and it redoes it. So this undo redo mechanism is pretty common in a lot of different situations. So let's take a look at the, the structure and participants of the pattern as per the Gang of Fours nomenclature. So what they're doing here is they're using a, a variant of the unified modeling language to express the structure in, in a graphical way. So there's a role in the pattern called the invoker, and that's the thing that's going to cause the command to be executed or run. And we'll talk about how this is done later when we talk about the template method pattern. And there's a class there called input handler. And input handler is what kind of sets all the things in motion with our expression tree. It, it basically is used to prompt the user for some command. It takes the command, it executes the command, and then it does something as a result. The command, of course, is the, the abstract base class that has an execute method, or at least an execute method. It could have other ones like unexecute as well. And what it does is it's the, the root of the hierarchy. And so in our case, that's user command impl. And then we have all the different concrete commands that in, inherit and extend the command abstract uh, base class. And in this case, it would be things like format command, expert command, print command, eval command, macro command, and so on and so forth. And as you can see, either that is either done by execute or it forwards to some target. If it forwards to some target, then the target is actually what does the work. And we'll see in our particular example, when we look at the state pattern later, that the tree context is the part that, that actually is the target for commands. And there's reasons for, for decoupling things like that, because we want to decouple the way in which the commands are encapsulated and bundled as objects from the actual processing that they do when they're executed. And that's just sort of a uh, extra level of indirection model that's very handy, especially when you start working with high pattern density designs that want to include different bits and pieces from different patterns and have them all work together. And then finally, there's the client, which is the recipient of all the things we're doing. And in our case, that's the user interface. So the client of all this will be used to display the results. So after you type in, you know, 
minus five times three plus four, then the result is output onto the, the GUI, either onto the, the, uh, the graphic user interface if we're doing it in Android, or it'll be put out on the command line output if we're doing the command line console version. The client and the invoker objects may be the same or they could be different. In our case, they're different. In other situations, they could be the same. But uh, th those are sort of ancillary to the overall essence of this pattern, which is really the command base class, the concrete command subclasses or derived classes, and then the target, which is what's actually going to do the work and perform the action. The invoker and the client are, are important because they're needed to get things to, to get input and output, but they're not as important as the other elements in this pattern.